Hi, greetings. It's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and I want to walk you through uh, the fundamentals of APA writing. And if you want to pass any class that has a requirement for APA writing, it really is important that you uh, be able to look at some of the finer details. APA is not hard, but there are a lot of little subtle nuances. And uh, what I did in order to find this sample document is I just went to Google and I Googled the world word sample APA uh, paper. And in that, one of my favorite examples comes from uh, the Purdue Owl. And uh, it's a, uh, a really pretty substantial website that really has all the subtles, subtleties explained. And you're going to see what I mean. In this sample paper, uh, you could see in green and in purple that uh, it explains what's taking place. And so let's start from the very start of the document into the end. And I, I hope that you find this information helpful because I want everybody who is enrolled in a class that requires APA to do well. So notice at the very top, it's about one inch exactly from the very top, and you use the insert page numbers feature to get your running head. And with that, you notice it's capital R, small u-n-n-i-n-g, small h-e-a-d, colon, and then all capitals, uh, the title of your paper. In this case, it's varying definitions of online communication. And then you see a number one there. That's the page number that's automatically inserted. Notice the comment, green text boxes contain explanations of APA style guides, and blue boxes contain directions for writing and citing in APA style. So let's look at the next thing on here. You've got uh, double-spaced information here on your page. The, the title, obviously, uh, this says the title should summarize the paper's main ideas and identify the variables under discussion and the relationship between them. So varying definitions of online communication, their effects on relationship research. And then it's all double spaced and you have the name of the author and then the name of the institution here and, and it says the author's name and institution should be double spaced and centered and that's exactly what happens and so you notice that the heading here on this paper is just a little bit above the center of the page so um, the make note here that the running head is a shortened version of the paper's title and it is used to help readers identify the titles for published articles even if your paper is not intended for publication your paper should still have a running head a lot of students forget that uh, here's a comment here at the bottom uh, the author's note should appear on the printed article and identifies each author's department institution affiliation and any change and changes in affiliation contains acknowledgments and any financial support received so you could obviously read that for yourself and then you scroll down and here's your abstract it's on page two so your abstract has its own page uh, you notice that the word running head is not here but you still have the page number in the top right hand corner and the word abstract is capitalized but it's the only only the first letter is capitalized and you notice here that this is block left justified. So the abstract is a brief summary of the paper allowing readers to quickly review the main points and purpose of the paper. The abstract should be between 150 to 250 words. Abbreviations and acronyms used in the paper should be defined in the abstract. The word abstract should be centered and typed in 12 point Times New Roman and not indented the first line of the abstract uh, of all paragraphs in the paper should be indented. So the abstract is not indented, but all the other paragraphs in the paper should be indented. And you notice the word abstract is not bold. So another subtlety of APA, and I just went to page three, is that the very first heading in this case, their effects on relationship research. This is a level one heading, but notice the note here. 
the title of the paper is centered and not bolded. The title should be centered on the page, typed in 12-point Times New Roman. Uh, it should not be bolded, underlined, or italicized. So uh, this very first heading is one of the subtleties that you do not bold it. So if, as you look at how uh, APA works. Here's an APA citation. Cummings, Butler, and Kraut, 2002, suggest that the face, FTF, uh, interaction are more effective than CMC, read email in the creative. So there's a note here. The introduction represents the problem that the paper addresses. See the L resource on introductions, and there's a website there. In an article, uh, if an article has three to five authors, write out all of the author's names first time they appear. This is something that I see happen a lot, is sometimes people will just skimp on doing that, and then they'll just use that out. But you first have to list all of the names of the authors first in your paper, and then in, in future paragraphs you can use the first author's last name followed by et al. And so I'll show you an example of that later here in the paper. Well, here is the next level one heading. And so as things work out, you have to have a level one heading in order to have a level two heading. I've seen people who start out with a level two heading, and that doesn't make sense. So you got to have a level one heading, then you can have a level two heading, and you got to have a level two heading, that then have a level three heading. And so here's a level one heading, and it is bold. And so generally speaking, uh, besides the very in the abstract or reference uh, and very first paragraph, your level one headings need to be bold. So um, notice that this paragraph is indented, and because we've mentioned these three authors up here in this paragraph, we then can use et al. So Cummings et al. is uh, another way of saying Cummings, Butler, and Kraut. And then you still see the 2002 here in parentheses. Uh, notice the comment. In-text citations that are direct quotes should include the author's name, the publication year, and page numbers. If you are paraphrasing a source, APA encourages you to include page numbers. So. Um, I'll show you what the format is, but generally speaking, you must paraphrase in your papers in your own words. So that means read the article or read the paragraph and just sum up in your own words what that says. And a good way of doing that is to close the article, don't look at it and ask yourself what did that say, and then make sure that you cite it properly. APA requires you to include the publication year because APA users are concerned with the date and the article in the more current, uh, more and more current, the better. So um, in this paper, you'll notice that the period is after the citation. So the author of this paper goes on to talk about what some facts that she found in doing her research from particularly this article, and then at the end to show that these are facts that came from an article that she's paraphrasing, she used Cummings et al. comma 2002. Again, as she starts a new paragraph, she introduces those authors by saying, Cummings et al. reviewed an additional study conducted in 1999. So, and then she talks about, in parentheses, see Appendix A for more information. So uh, generally speaking, you want to put the facts in the back of your paper to help uh, illuminate key facts, but this keeps um, your content flowing, and people know uh, to remember to go back and read the rest of the paper. So you notice that there again is your, there's no spaces between any of the paragraphs. Here's a, another a list of authors, Kraut, Mukfatapadye, uh, Skuzapula, Keisler, and Shurlis. And forgive me if I've, I've mispronounced the words. So 
but here's the four authors, and this author of this paper says that um, these authors compared the value of using CMC and non-CMC. So uh, you go down, and she uses as cited in Cummings et al. So uh, there's another way to do an in-text citation. So you notice how paragraphs have more than one sentence. So your first sentence should introduce the idea. The following sentences in that same paragraph should support the idea. And then the last sentence should sum things up and tie into the next sentence. Uh, who et al. So you can see that they're using et al. here because in the previous paragraph, they've already mentioned all four of these authors. And notice the period is at the end of the citation, not before the in-text citation. So make sure you're putting the period in the right place as you paraphrase. So uh, you're not seeing a lot of direct quotes in here because direct quotes are generally only used for like when the author is notable, like JFK, for instance, or Martin Luther King. They say something that is a, a sound bit that just sticks out. Or if uh, changing the words would change the meaning or feeling. So generally speaking, uh, you need to be the author of the paper and say, hey, this is the general gist of what these researchers have said, or these other authors have said, and I'm putting it in my own words because this is my own paper. And so I'm not the only one that believes this. This came from a good source. So notice as you go down the paper, they, uh, the author introduces more information that support the main idea. Similarly, Underwood and Finley, 2004, studied the effect. So notice how the language of an APA author shares the research that uh, they've done in here. And so you're developing on ideas, and then you're supporting the ideas with, uh, with citations to say, this is research that I found that other people are doing, so this is where I got my source. And of course, your in-text citations will go down as a relationship with your references that will be in the back. And so we'll, I'll outline those. So do make sure that you Google APA sample paper and you find this PDF from the Purdue Owl as you go along. Uh, notice here it's it's talking about headings as we go down. You notice there's page number in upper right hand corner and of course the uh, shortened title of, of your paper is here in the header. And here's a level one heading and the level one heading should be centered, bolded, and uppercase, and lowercase also referred to as title case. So you see the capital D and then the rest of the words are, are it, letters are bold. Uh, here is a level two heading. You notice a level two heading goes under the, the main heading and it's a subcategory of this. So limitations of these studies is, is a part of the discussion. So that's why this is a level two heading. And you'll notice that there is a level three heading here underneath a paragraph that has the level two. So let's read what the notes say here. Because all research has its limitations, it's important to discuss the limitations of articles under examination. Notice here what it says about the level two heading. The level two heading should be flush with the left margin, bolded, and title case. So you notice here limitations has a capital L, but small letters after that. The, le the two letters of of, because it's not a major word, is small lowercase, and then capital T for these, and capital S for studies. That's what a, a level two heading is. It's left justified, and it's bold, and it uses capital letters over major words. Now, let's look at this level three heading. What's interesting is that it is inside of the paragraph. It is indented, but only the first uh, word has the first letter capitalized, and it ends with a period. So it's capital T, and then the rest of the word in lowercase, and then all the following words. In this case, there's only two words, 
technological limitations, period. Uh, that's in the paragraph. It's still indented. So here's what uh, they say at the Purdue L. A level three heading should and be indented a half an inch from the left margin, bolded and lowercase, except for the first word. Text should follow uh, immediately after if you use more than three levels of headings. Consult section 3.2 of the APA manual. So it really is important to be able to uh, follow the right um, format. That's what APA is all about. It's about a consistent format. So introduce your idea at the start of each paragraph. Give supporting information in the middle of your paragraph. Make sure that you are using the proper spacings. Generally speaking, there is a space after every period. And you have to mention all the authors before you can use et al. And so we use et al when there are three or more authors involved. And you've already mentioned those authors. So as you scroll down, you really read through and ask yourself about sentence structure. What did the author do here? What is it about these headings that make a lot of sense here? Uh, notice how they've used as cited in uh, Cummings et al. Notice how uh, they reintroduce the authors in each paragraph. Every paragraph of your writing really should have at least one uh, Cite in-text citation to support you, the ideas. And that's, that's the whole purpose of your paper is to say, hey, I've done some research and I want to talk about this phenomena that's taking place in my own words. You don't see a lot of direct quotes thrown in here because it's the author of the paper that's writing the paper and supporting her ideas with the literature. So you're paraphrasing throughout. So you notice here, this is the last page of this uh, paper and the final heading is a level one heading conclusions of future studies and it kind of sums things up and here's what the they say here in this green box the conclusion restates the problem the paper addresses and can offer areas for further research see the owl uh, resource conclusion so it refers you back to this really awesome website on APA writing. So notice, do read through the sample paper uh, and, and see how the writing is done. Here's the reference page. Notice on the reference page, the word reference is not bold. It is in the center of the paper. There's no extra spaces between the running head and this, it's just all double spaced. Notice your references are all double spaced. And notice that this is reverse indented. This ends in a period. Notice there is a space between the periods unless it's followed by a comma. So Cummings, comma, space, capital J, period, space, N, period, comma, space, Butler, comma, B, period, comma, space, ampersand kraut so notice there is an ampersand uh, before the last author in here and notice what is in italics this uh, publication title communications of acm and then you have the 45 and no space seven in parentheses and then 103-108. So you've got the volume number, the issue number, comma, space, and then the page numbers, and it ends with a period. So this is how we know that the article title was named The Quality of Online Social Relationships, period, space, and the publication was a journal called Communications of the ACM. Uh, this journal here is... Uh, uh, was written in 2004. Uh, the title of the article is not in italics. Uh, Friends with IM, colon, capital E, examining the relationship between the instant messaging and intimacy, period. And then the publication title, which is in I italics, and then 10, uh, the issue number, and then 38 through 48 is the page numbers, period. So, um, Publication titles uh, are in italics. These are all double-spaced. Notice there's 
a space between the periods. There's a period after the date. Um, these are some of the things that I miss. Um, I sometimes miss. And then it it refers to the page numbers that were cited uh, in earlier in the title. So I double dog dare you to download a copy of the APA from the Purdue Owl website, the sample paper, which is a PDF, and go through and ask yourself, what do they do with sentence structure here? What are the periods? Where are the, how did they support their ideas here? What is bolded and not bolded? Uh, most likely, uh, your grade, if APA formatting is a part of your curriculum, which they are in my classes, and cited in the syllabus, you're being held accountable for APA formatting. So anyway, I hope that this has helped you become a better APA writer. Uh, we write in third person. We make sure that we are uh, int making introducing a statement. We're supporting each of the paragraphs properly with research. And if you're, you're saying things, they should be properly cited with research. Uh, to support your ideas. So I hope this has helped. Anyway, I look forward to working with you. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Have a great day.